Hey, my name is Carl Anderson, and uh, welcome on this new webcast where I'm going to show you how to handle concurrency in uh, your ISP.NET web applications. And actually, this, this could be extended to more than just an ISP.NET application because just like data validation, uh, concurrency management is done through the persistence layer and the BOM layers. Uh, so all uppers, so all upper layers can benefit from those those uh, capabilities. So here we have a custom ISP.NET website which is based on it and uh, what we want to do is handle cases where two users are um, updating the same data and uh, so in those cases well uh, a collision will, ha will happen and uh, what can we do to handle those collisions so there are three different um, there are three algorithms uh, to handle concurrency the, the well if you're not handling concurrency, uh, you're applying what we call the last one wins rule, which where basically the the last one writing the, writing or updating the data uh, will always be right. It will always always overwrite what anyone else has done. Uh, meanwhile, he was editing his his data. Uh, another uh, very common way to handle concurrency is called the optimistic algorithm. Where uh, both users can can get the data, work on it, and uh, the first one will be able to commit his data, but the second one, when it will try to commit his data, will have an error saying that the data was updated by someone else, and then that he would is is going to need to uh, to refresh his data and start his changes again. And this uh, this algorithm is uh, supported and activated by default in Confluent entities, and uh, Last, lastly, there's uh, the third algorithm, which is uh, which is the pessimistic uh, algorithm. is uh, It's uh, in a scenario where two users are trying to edit the same data. The second, well, when the first user retrieves the data, it will lock this data, and other users won't even be able to retrieve and get a hand on the data, so that they won't get into this uh, this conflict later on. And uh, so. Uh, although it can be uh, it can be modeled in the Confluent model, it's not it's not uh, provided out of the box in uh, Confluent entities. So what we're gonna see in this webcast is uh, uh, how to activate the uh, concurrency and uh, how to implement it in your website. So how to activate it is actually uh, very straightforward. You don't have to do anything because by default it is activated. So here is my entity, and you can see that. By default, I have nothing specifying any uh, concurrency behavior. However, you can deactivate it if, if ever you want to, uh, so that you'll apply the last one wins rule and not the optimistic algorithm. So, how it is implemented? Uh, if we check the uh, the database that was generated, our contact admin database, you'll see that that uh, the table corresponding to our uh, to our uh, contact entity has a reversion column this reversion column is a timestamp time meaning that uh, each time a write operation occurs on the line the timestamp is updated by the server and so when you retrieve a line in your in your upper layers you retrieve this timestamp as well this raw version so uh, whenever two users retrieve a line, they get uh, the sa they have the same raw version. But when one user will update will update his uh, his line, the raw version will change. And whenever the second user will try to to uh, commit his changes, um, the processor will see that the raw versions do not match and will raise a confluent concurrency exception. So all you have to do after a while. Uh, afterwards is to handle that concurrency exception in the code. So if you remember in our in our uh, manage contact list here I can manage my contacts and uh, if you remember in the screens edit and and insert so we're going to see the edit one uh, I used to have well I have a, uh, a a zone in which I can display errors and exceptions and uh, those exceptions are simply displayed in it. So what we're going to do 
is we're going to create a concurrency exception. So it's actually very straightforward. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open to browser right there. And uh on and I'm going to I'm going to try edit the same the same line into browser. So let's let's edit Alan Lee in the in the first browser and Alan Lee in the second browser. So here I'm the first user and uh now I'm changing my contact to be uh let's name in let's name in Jane and I updated and by doing so the raw version was updated and here when I'll try to commit that change uh, whatever and I go click OK here I get a concurrency exception so th this is how the optimistic uh, algorithm is implemented in Confluent and, and as, you s as you, you've just seen I haven't uh, develop a single line. This is all by default and out of the box in Confluent entities. Well, thank you very much and see you on next webcast where we'll see how to implement sorting and paging. Thank you very